That was a very strange noise. In this video, we're gonna be doing another battery test on Lucky. She's lucky at the moment. And, but this time it's gonna be a Tesla specific battery test because based on the comments that we had in my last video, and I kind of agree with them, that a battery test needs to have some sort of load on the battery uh, while it's being tested, which was something that uh, Ewan McTurk, which is someone I know who's very much a battery expert mentioned, uh, is a must have to really see the, um, the battery health. So I'm gonna be doing that now. And while it's doing its thing, it takes 24 hours. Um, it, this isn't a 24 hour video, um, but I'll show you a couple of other things. It's been done on the car so far and what there is to do to get it ship shape and also to talk about the bad news around the uh, air conditioning system. So how do you do a battery test, uh, official Tesla one on a Tesla Model 3? So first of all, you plug in your charger, like so, in it goes. And I have noticed that the light on here doesn't actually show white, it shows like a weird purpley color. I'm not sure if anyone's seen that before but it seems to the AC charge and DC charge right so far. So that's actually charging. I need to stop it charging. Um, so let's go back inside and do that. So stop charging. And what we've got to do is we've got to turn off all the schedules, everything, preconditions, um, also the um, climate control, which turns on if the vehicle gets too hot inside and then we will do the test. So let me do all of that now, and then we'll start the test. So overheat protection off. Good job, it is only 10 degrees. It's not getting any warmer. It's drizzly and gray in the UK today. So that should be all good. Now we go to vehicles plugged in, charging. Well, it's not charging, but it's plugged in. Uh, it needs to be at least, I think, seven, six or seven kilowatts. There's loads of videos online to do a test, but ultimately you go to software and she's now done 218,293. Um, so she's done 1,100 miles since I've picked her up. So press and hold till we get a little puddle drop and then we put in service. I believe there is a um, battery health test coming on the next update. Um, it comes up with this, which is fine. Enter. This is service mode because you've got the red around the screen. Uh, by the way, I realized that this vehicle has got autopilot, but not full self-driving. It said full self-driving computer three. So I was like, it's full self-driving. But when I looked at Rusty, who's not actually there at the moment, um, it's got full self-drive computer three. And then below that, it says full self-driving. So I was a bit duped on that one. So sorry to dupe you guys in terms of the spec. You know, in terms of the difference, it doesn't have auto lane, yeah, auto lane movement, which I love. I haven't really noticed that much difference other than that. I've not played around with the uh, traffic lights thing and I don't really use auto summon, although it is quite cool. Um, maybe I'll show you that in another video. Uh, and I think there's one of my shorts videos. So check that out with Rusty with the sound exhaust system. Don't ask. So um, <laughs> we go to high voltage, HV battery, start test. Pumps, fans, drive units may make a noise. Yep, because what it does, uh, so it's currently on 7%. So it uses the pumps, fans and drive units to come down to zero. It stays there for a long time for the BMS to uh, recognize what zero is, I believe. And then it goes all the way up to 100, which, and it stays on zero for a long time, which is a little bit nerve wracking. And it goes up to 100, stays there for ages. And this is exactly what I did with Rusty. And this was the plan originally. Because my last video plan was actually do the Tesla health test on Rusty, then Lucky, and then do the scan my Tesla. But the Rusty test failed, and it's, I just really don't like this test because it just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm obviously I'm clearly doing it wrong sometimes, but yeah, it's just it takes 24 hours, so that's quite a long time to have your everyday car out of. Uh, out of action so let's run it let's hopefully it'll be sorted by it's eight o'clock now so hopefully it'll be sorted by eight o'clock tomorrow but i bet it's going to take longer so let's run uh press and hold the brake right signal and this is the charge cable is connected by the way there we go counts down i'm pretty sure we press start there we go i don't know if you can hear that but the pumps and fans are going 
successfully started the HV battery state of health test. So as we let that happen, <laughs> um, let's go into the garage and let me take you through what I've done so far on the car and what there is to do and go through the costs because ultimately what we need to understand is did I buy a lemon um, and has it been worth it? Again, it's gonna take a couple of episodes once we've sorted out the issues with the air conditioning system, uh, but let's go in the garage and tot it up so far. So I thought what we could do is cost up what needs doing to Lucky um, while we wait for the state of health uh, check to be done on the vehicle. So I'll write down what needs to be done, what it's gonna cost and some estimations in there. Give us the result of how much it's gonna to be to get it looking right and yeah, ready to go, ready to be safe on the road and do many more thousands of miles. So let's start with front bumper. So front bumper, I think that that is gonna cost 200 pounds. Sills, I reckon that'd be 200 quid. Um, the lacquer on the rear bumpers. So this is all body work right now. Lacquer, I don't reckon that's gonna cost anything. I'll either roll it into that price or I'll do it myself because I can lacquer the rear bumper, just mask out. I don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue. So what's next? Tires. So I've already bought a couple of rear tires and I'm sure people will love the fact that I've bought some five mil part worns, Dunlop, Dunlops, it cost me 125 pounds for the pair. Again, I'm trying to keep the cost down so it's ready to go. Normally I'd have matching tires, but the front tires are getting close as well. So I thought let's put those on and then, um, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Fitting is probably gonna cost me about 25 pounds, I'd say. Um, steering wheel. So I know I can get one for 125 pounds delivered and I'm gonna fit that myself. Um, service and bushes. So I know that the rear bushes need sorting out. And when the rear bushes were done on Rusty, it cost me about 300 quid. Now it could cost a lot more than that, um, but I'm gonna put 300 pounds in there for now. In terms of the service, when I'm getting it up on the ramp to check the bushes and anything else wrong, we'll kind of service the vehicle, look around it, make sure it's all tickety-boo, and I'll fit a couple of cabin, cabin filters in there, and they're 17 pound each, so what's that, 34 pounds? And then we've got, what else needs doing to the car? Um, oh yeah, the air conditioning system. So I've got no idea what that's gonna to cost to fix. When I went into Tesla, they, uh, the technician suggested changing the cabin filters and also regassing the, the air conditioning system. I've already got a quote from Tesla from the app and I don't know how accurate that, that's gonna be, but they've said 350 odd pounds for the AC system. The number plate that was falling off, that's all sorted. It was just a screw, that's all fixed now. So that's all tickety-boo. So this is basically the estimate of getting the car ship shape and ready to do many more thousands of miles, even though it's already done a thousand miles since I bought it. Um, so let's just add that up. So, uh, so and I can't remember the exact figure I bought the car, but it was about that, and that works out quite well there. So in total, to get it all sorted and all fixed, 12,100 pounds to get it all sorted, bodywork, rear tires, bushes. On the F, there's a few estimates in here. I don't think any of them are really gonna come down. They could go up, but I think even if it's, if it's between 12,100 and 12,500, I'd still be really, really happy. Um, and it's gonna be fun doing all these bits anyway. It'd be really interesting to see if I can get to that uh, 1,359 pounds to get it right. But that air conditioning system, that is a big worry. And before I forget, and I put it up here to remind me, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. There's not only this series of videos, we've also got uh, Tesla uh, Model 3, which is modified, rusty, and there's loads going on with that. So if there's any breaks in this series, I'll probably be focusing on rusty because there's a few bits to focus on that, including another battery test on that. Uh, also a few other modifications that are being done. So please like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of the content. And there's a massive back catalogue of really cool EV conversions, EV conversion shops and events that we've been to. So check it out. So I'm sure you want to know what's going on with the air conditioning system. So what I've done, I've gone into the service mode and it's highlighting the faults. 
and I shared these faults with one of the Tesla forums and there was a little bit of feedback. So let me show you the faults on the vehicle. So you have to put it in service mode and you look at service alerts and there is a compressor self fault, a cup, well, the same one there. Um, it says that there's an LV supply UV issue, radio soft reset error, uh, another HW LV supply, app mirror, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's to do with it, HVAC system, not nominal, uh, cabin HVAC unavailable, compressor self fault. So there's a few of these issues in here and then they get repeated basically. And people have said, uh, generally when there's a compressor fault, um, it's not commonly due to the compressor being worn out or needing to be replaced. If it's a heat pump car, which this one is, then the super manifold, super, also needs to be replaced. The interesting thing with this one is less common compressor MIA alerts. This makes me think the compressor may have just blown its HV fuse, which if it's just a fuse, that'd be a bonus. Uh, in that case, it would just need the compressor and the fuse. Um, might be just another person put another compressor inverter PCBA is shorted internally. The fact that the other module on the CAN bus are reporting it MIA tells me that the module isn't communicating well or at all. Before swapping out the entire heat pump system, I'd check resistance between power and ground pins. Now, there's a couple of ways I could have tackled this. I could have the obvious choice is go to Cleveland EV because potentially save money, but then again, they haven't got the potential diagnostics that Tesla have. And I know that this, after talking to the service guy, um, I found out that um, it was updated. It was coming in for the fix and it was just updated over the air. So it could be something really minor and it's still 352 pounds I have to pay a Tesla and it's going in tomorrow. So that's gonna be my next video focusing on exactly, let's hope it's not too bad, the faults on Lucky. And I've also got something really exciting to talk about on the next video as well. This little nice surprise I found out about the car very recently. I'm a bit confused because it's making the fan noise and it's still showing 0%. So why is it still discharging? Do people know why? Put it in the comments. Does it discharge less than the 0% to get right down to the bottom of the battery? Oh, I don't like the feeling of that, getting right to the bottom of the battery. It just makes me feel really nervous, especially with the mileage that Lucky's done. Anyway, we're gonna leave her to it, I guess. So the good news is that it's now at 58 miles, so it's charging quite happily. It didn't stay at 0% very long. When I had my failed attempt on Rusty, I was charging it overnight to try and save money of when it was charged back up again, because I like to save money when charging, obviously, when you've got a night rate. And it just stayed on 0% for ages, but this one seemed to only stay on 0% for, I would say, a couple of hours. So yeah, I'm not sure if the during the day affects that, or whether it's the car or the temperature, because it was pretty cold. But anyway, it's happily charging. So fingers crossed it'll be all sorted for eight o'clock tomorrow morning. I doubt it, to be honest, but you live in hope, right? Okay, it's seven o'clock in the evening now. So that is what, 11 hours. And let me show you the percentage. So it's now at 79%. So it's probably gonna be about 100% by the time it's 12 o'clock. And then in the morning, we should have the result, fingers crossed. Okay, so it's 20 past eight in the morning. So it's officially been exactly 24 hours and 20 minutes. We're gonna get in the car and I'm hoping that it's worked. Please tell me it's worked. It's not worked. Normally it's there. I'm sure it's been there before. So it doesn't look like it's ready yet. So I'm gonna leave it still. The annoying thing is I think that these tests harm the battery because at 100% it said two, three, uh, two, three, seven miles. And last time I did 100% it said 239. Interested on people's view on does this test harm the battery uh, in terms of a deg degradation a bit more. Could do less of that, to be honest. 
So I'm going to leave it longer and hopefully it will come up with the results soon and hopefully it has worked. Otherwise it's been a complete waste of time and I've charged on a more expensive rate. This is why I don't like this test. Frustrating. So we're coming out again. It's, what time is it now? It's about 10, it's 11 actually, 10 past 11. Uh, I reckon we're not gonna have any joy here, but let's give it a go. It's certainly making some noise. Doesn't look like it's done anything. It's definitely had enough time. So it's either worked or it hasn't worked, but let's stop it. Successfully stopped. And this is why I hate this test, because it's just like, I don't want to leave it 100% for like long periods of time, because it obviously, it's not good for the battery, but I've given it what, 24, I've given it 27 hours. It says within 24 hours. So I don't know, you know, I left the vehicle alone. I didn't touch it, didn't do anything. So I don't understand why it hasn't worked. Okay, good and bad news. So. As some will know, there is a new feature, which is the battery health check feature. Let me show you. So I've literally just downloaded it. You go to service, it goes to, in there, battery health test, last tested on the 28th of March. So I'm not sure if my test that I did takes this into consideration, but as you can tell, 71%, that's not ideal. Like I said in the last video, this vehicle is for my other half and 200 mile range, realistic range, is, is absolutely fine. I mean, it's showing 238, 237, 100%. You know, it's absolutely fine. I'd rather have a Tesla with higher mileage than any other electric car with lower mileage. So I'm sure that people will probably want to know, or some of the charge heads viewers that have been watching it for a while want to know what Rusty is like. So I'm going to download the software update on that and we'll have a look to see what the state of health is on that vehicle too.